iron ore extracts and export duty of 15% in the case of lumps and 5% in the case of fines. This is natural resource which needs to be conserved. I propose to enhance the rate of export duty for all types of iron ore and unify it at 20% at Valoram. Iron ore is also exported in a value-added pelletized form. Full exemption from export duty is being provided to iron ore pellets to encourage the value addition process for fines. As a measure of relief to cement industry, I propose to replace the existing excise duty rates with composite rates of having an ad valorem and specific component with some rationalization. Basic customs duty on two critical raw materials of this industry, that is pet coke and gypsum, is proposed to be reduced to 2.5%. To drive the financial inclusion agenda of the government, I propose to fully exempt cash dispensers from basic customs duty. Full exemption is also being extended to parts of such machines to encourage their domestic production. Full exemption from basic customs duty and a concessional rate of central excise duty of 4% was provided to specified parts of electric vehicles in the last budget on actual user's basis. I propose to extend the concession to batteries imported by such manufacturers for the replacement market. Fuel cell or hydrogen cell technology is a promising green technology for the automobile sector. I propose to extend the concessional excise duty of 10% to vehicles based on this technology. Hybrid vehicles enjoy a concessional excise duty rate of 10%. However, import dependence for their critical parts and sub-assemblage is still quite high. It is proposed to grant specified parts of such vehicles full exemption from basic customs duty and special CVD. In addition, a concessional rate of excise duty of 5% is being prescribed to incentivize their domestic production. In response to growing demand for the green products, <coughs> a technology has been developed indigenously by the, uh, for the conversion of the fossil fuel vehicles into hybrid vehicles through the fitment of a kit. I propose to reduce the excess duty on such kits and their parts from 10% to 5%. In the last budget, central excess duty on LED lights was reduced from 8% to 4% to promote their use. The basic component of these lights, that is LED, attracts an excise duty, hence CVD of 10% and a special CVD of 4%. The excise duty of LED is being reduced to 5% and specified CVD is being fully exempted. Solar lantern enables our countrymen a far-flung villages to partake the development in green technology. The basic customs duty on such lanterns is being reduced from 10% to 5%. Basic customs duty on a few more inputs used in the manufacture of solar modules cell is being reduced to nil. Environmental considerations <coughs> demand promotion for non soaps, which conserve water and are gentle on the soil. To this end, full exemption from the basic customs duty is being provided to crude palm terrain for use in the manufacture of the laundry soap. Pre-tanning or tanning process in the leather industry use chemicals which are pollutants. To encourage use of the green process, full exemption from the basic customs duty is being granted to uh, enzyme-based preparations for pre-tanning. Capital goods imported for the expansions of existing mega or ultra-mega power projects enjoy a concessional basic customs duty of 2.5% and full exemption from CVD. This creates a disability for the domestic suppliers who are required to pay central excise duty on suppliers to e such projects. I propose to correct this anomaly by providing a parallel excise duty exemption. Bio-based asphalt is an emerging green technology for the surfacing of roads. Full exemption from the basic customs duty is being extended to bio-asphalt and specified machinery for its application in the construction of the national highways. Tunnel boring machines required for the constructions of the highways are also being included in this exemption. Works of art and antiquities are exempt from the customs duties when imported for exhibition in a public museum or national institution. In recent years, many organizations have joined the cause of, cause of promoting and popularizing both traditional and contemporary art. Some of them have been active in locating heritage works of Indian art and antiquities in foreign countries and bringing them back home. To encourage such initiatives, I propose to expand the scope of this exemption <clears throat> of works of art and antiquities to also apply 
to imports for exhibition or display in private art galleries or similar premises that are open to the general public. Department of Culture will notify details of this scheme. Full exemption from the import duty is available to spares and capital goods required for ship repair units. This exemption is being ex extended to imports by ship owners too. Concessional basic customs duty of 5% uh, and CVD of 5% presently applicable to high-speed printing process imported by newspapers establishment is being extended to mailroom equipment. The Indian film industry has represented that color, uh, that color unexposed jumbo rolls of cinematographic film are not manufactured domestically and have to be imported. I propose to exempt jumbo rolls of 4,000 feet and 10,000 feet from CVD by providing full exemption from excise duty. I propose to provide outright concessions to factory built ambulance in place of the existing refund based concessions from excise duty. A refund based concession is available to taxis having a seating capacity not exceeding 7% including driver. I propose to extend this to vehicle up to a sitting capacity not exceeding 13 percent, including the driver. Some of the other relief measures that I propose are reduction in basic customs duty on raw pistachio from 30 percent to 10 percent, reduction in basic customs duty on bamboo for agarbati from 30 percent to 10 percent, reduction in basic customs duties on lactose for the manufacture of homeopathic medicine from 25% to 10%, reduction in central excise duty on sanitary napkins, baby and adult diapers from 10% to 1%. My proposals relating to customs and central excise are estimated to result in a net revenue gain of 7,300 crore for the year. <coughs> Madam Speaker, I now come to service tax. The actual collections of the service tax do not reflect the full potential of this sector. While retaining the standard rate of service tax at 10 percent, I seek to achieve a closer fit between the present service tax regime and its GST successor by bringing in a few uh, new services into the tax net to expand the tax base while ensuring that while ensuring the impact is predominantly on uh, sections of society that have the ability to pay suitably expanding or rationalizing the scope of existing service category, rationalizing certain provisions relating to import of services and valuation, modifying provisions of the send that credit scheme to achieve a more realistic balance between input credits and output tax harmonizing the provisions of the scheme across the goods and services, rationalizing the penal provisions to reinforce the message that honest taxpayers should be facilitated and deviance would be dealt with severity. Adoption of point of taxation rules for services would shift the basis for tax collection from cash towards accrual basis as with the central excise duty. I propose to levy service tax on the following new services. Hotel accommodation in excess of declared tariff of rupees 1,000 per day with an abatement of 50% so that the effective burden is only 5%. Services provided by air-conditioned restaurants that have license to serve liquor by giving an abatement of 70 percent, thus the effective burden will be 3 percent. Imposed service tax in 2010-11 on health checkup or treatment. This levy has resulted in differential treatment between the persons who make payments themselves and others where payments are made by an insurance company or business entity. Thus, I propose to replace it with a tax on all services provided by hospitals with 25 or more beds that have the facility of central air conditioning. Though the tax is on the high-end <coughs> treatment, I propose to sweeten this bill by pro providing an abatement of 50 percent so that the actual burden is kept at 5 percent of the value of service. I also propose to extend the levy to diagnostic, diagnostic tests of all kinds with the same rate of abatement. However, all government hospitals shall be outside the levy. I propose to raise the service tax on air travel by 50 rupees in the case of domestic air travel and 250 rupees on international journeys by economic law. I also propose to tax travel by higher classes on domestic sector at the standard rate of 10 percent to bring it on par with the journeys by higher classes in international airfare. Services provided by life insurance companies in the area 
of investment are also proposed to be brought into tax net on the same lines as ULIPs. I propose to expand the scope of legal services to include services provided by business entities to individuals as well as representational and arbitration services by individuals to business entities. There shall, however, be no tax on services provided by individuals to other individuals. There are certain other changes mainly by way of <coughs> rationalization or expansion in the scope of certain services by plugging existing loopholes. I do not wish to take the valuable time of the House in further elaboration here. I have already taken enough time. The strength of a good value-added tax lies in the free flow of credit for the tax paid at the previous stage. Due to complexity, there have been many legal disputes on the availability of the credit on a number of inputs or input services. These provisions are being rationalized by laying down clear definitions so that the scope of inputs and input services that are eligible and those that are not is clear. Allocation of SENVAT credit to exempt and taxable goods and services is also being streamlined. The number of assesses in service tax has grown manifold. I find that a large number of them comprise individuals or sole proprietors with small turnovers. Any audit at their premises tends to dislocate their activities for the duration of the audit. I therefore propose to free all individuals and sole proprietor taxpayers with a turnover up to 60 lakh from the formalities of audit. This will give relief to a large number of taxpayers. I also intend to give all SSEs with turnover up to 60 lakh the benefit of three percentage points on, in interest on delayed payment. In keeping with our trust to encourage voluntary compliance, the penal provisions for the service tax are being rationalized. A key component of this strategy would be to treat less harshly those who have maintained truthful records but have fallen short of discharging their tax liability. Simultaneously, deliberate evaders with unrecorded business transactions will be dealt with more severely. Similar changes are being carried out in Central Excise and Customs Bill. The details of the provisions are in the Finance Bill. <clears throat> My proposals relating to the service tax are estimated to result in a net revenue gain of 4,000 crore of rupees for the year. Many experts have argued that it will be desirable to tax services based on the small negative list so that many untapped sectors are brought into the tax net. Such an approach will be very conducive for a nationwide GST. I propose to initiate an informed public debate on the subject to help us finalize the approach to GST. Copies of notifications giving effect to the changes in customs, central exchange and service tax will be laid on the table of the House in due course. My proposals on direct taxes are estimated to result in a revenue loss of 11,500 crore for the year. Proposals relating to indirect taxes are estimated to result in a net revenue gain of 11,300 crore, leaving a net loss of rupees 200 crore. Therefore, I have not made any resource mobilization through taxation. Madam Speaker, as an emerging economy, with a voice on the global stage, India stands at the threshold of a decade which presents immense possibilities. We must not let the recent strains and tensions hold us back from converting these possibilities into reality. With oneness of heart, let us all build an India which is not too distant a future will enter the Committee of Developed Nations Madam Speaker, with these words, I commend the budget for the consideration of the House. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay on the table of the following statements under Section 3.1 of the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act 2003 macroeconomic framework right. statement, medium term fiscal policy statement, and fiscal policy strategy statement. Thank you. Shifra Madam Speaker, I 
beg to move for leave to introduce the finance bill 2011. The question is that leave be granted to introduce the finance bill 2011. Those in favor may say aye. aye. Those against may say no. I think the eyes have it. Eyes have it. it. The leave is granted. The minister may now Madam Speaker, the finance bill. I beg to introduce the finance bill. Thank you.